there is no better gift to give your parents or your loved ones than a digitized version of all their family photo albums. In parts one and two of this series, we looked at the digitizing process and specific scanner settings, as well as some photo editing tricks to give you the highest quality possible. In this final stage of the digitizing process, we'll organize all your photos into a searchable database and prepare them to be viewed on a digital photo frame by your parents and other family members. It will truly be the gift of a lifetime. Now you're ready to move on to the final phase of this entire process, and that is organizing your photos and preparing them to be viewed on a digital photo frame. I have a bunch of photos that I neglected to name while I was scanning. So I'm going to go to my hard drive where I've stored all my photos and rename the prefix to something meaningful. Let's widen this so I can see it. And scroll down to about where I think it starts. Now you can use this list view if you've named your files and that kind of gives you a heads up. But I went to this grid view, gallery view. You can scroll quickly to see, okay, where is the baby picture I'm looking for? Okay, this is the first one. And the last three numbers of that JPEG are 403. IMG, that's an image file, and that is the date, 2021-1213. This is the first file, and I know if I scroll down, I can find the ending file and make note of that number. Okay, that's the last file there, 853. So now what I can do that I know the first one ends with 403 and the last one ends with 853, I'm going to change this to list view. And there's the last one, 853. Highlight all the other ones up until 403 and go to rename. Now what I want to do is find anywhere in this highlighted selection that says IMG and replace it with my sister's name. And they become remapped. 403, alphabetized with Joy's name. So now Joy's name can be easily sorted from the rest. I love when I find a photo where my mother or my grandmother has written something on the back of the photo. It's easy to add a caption or descriptive detail to your pre-digital photos, no matter what photo application you use, simply by editing the metadata. Metadata is the information the camera captures when a photo is taken. It provides all kinds of details about the image and the camera used to take it. If you are exclusively using the Apple Photos app for your library organization, I'll show you a quick and easy way to edit the metadata by changing the Info tab. So keep watching. It's important to note that changing the Info tab will only affect the photos within the Photos app. Once you export the photos to view in another photo application, the edited metadata will not transfer with it. To make sure that the metadata remains with the photo no matter what program you're using to view it, skip ahead to the timestamp below to learn how to edit the metadata in Lightroom. Now back to the quick and easy method within the Photos app using the Info tab. You can add a caption or a descriptive title to a photo you have scanned by editing the Info tab. Select your photo and either go up to this info icon here, which will bring up the info tab here, or what I like to do is select the photo and simply hit Command I to bring up the same window. Now, you can see I've given this a title, but when I look at the date, the date is incorrect, November 1st, 2021. I happen to know that this photo was taken in 1961. So I can click on the date here 
and adjust the date and time of the selected photo. The original date is the date it was scanned. The adjusted date would be February 4th of 1961. The time was 7 p.m. Hit adjust. Now you will see that the original date is listed on the info tab. To add a caption, just type in whatever you would like. If there's something listed on the back of a photo, this is a good place to list it. I'm going to type in. I can add a keyword here and I can even assign a location. If you have multiple photos where you would like to adjust the capture date, select the photos and head to Image, Adjust Date and Time. We'll get the same pop-up window. And now, Command-I, and you will see the date has been changed. Now when you search by year, all those wedding photos are under 1961. It's a good idea to use keyword tags if you ever want to search for a specific photo in your library. Select the photos, either singly or multiple photos at once. Command-I again. Add a keyword name, underscore, and event. That keyword is added to all those photos. Now, when I do a search, I type in the keyword, and there are the photos from that collection. Another tip for organizing within the Photos app is to go to your Photos library, select People, and you can name faces so that the application will identify people that you tag. It's a good idea to use maiden names whenever possible. You may have to confirm additional photos that the app finds, but you can click yes or no. And now any other photo of Emily will be identified by her name. I'll tag one more. This is Marie. Now, if I come across any other photos of Emily or Marie, you will see their faces have been captured. If you plan to export your photos from the Photos app to another application like Lightroom, you'll need to learn how to edit the metadata so that it will be preserved no matter what application you use. Open Lightroom, select the library you want, select the photo you want or group of photos. Go to Photo, Edit Date and Time. Here you will be able to type in the date that you want to change it to. An approximate date is fine and hit change. If I wanted to select a group of photos, go to photo, edit date and time, and type in your corrected date. Now when I export the photo or group of photos, Select the photo on my desktop, bring up the info panel, and you will get more info. So you can see that the correct metadata exported with the photo this time, so that when I open it in another application like Preview, Command-I, you can see the digitized date, 2017, and the original date that we just adjusted 1961. Exported with the photo this time. Here's a bonus tip for you. After you have scanned all your photos, I highly recommend that you run your photos through a duplicate finder. At the end of my project, I had 6,000 photos. 
After running them through a duplicate finder, I eliminated 2,000 photos. If you didn't organize on the front end, then running a duplicate removal is an absolute must. There are free duplicate finder apps out there. I tried one called System Duplicate Finder, but it missed several duplicates and it ended up pulling some photos that it thought to be duplicates when in fact, it just shared a similar background or had a similar color range. It'll get you started if you need something free, but it's not perfect. Easy Duplicate Finder is a well-reviewed app and they have a free trial version if you wanna check it out. But by far the best option was Power Photos. David Cox with Tech Talk America has some fabulous videos on organizing photos and I highly recommend all of his tutorials. He teaches an easy to follow structure for organizing photos by year and he also has a video dedicated to removing duplicates in Power Photo. I'll add some links in the description. For $30, it will be money well spent. If you do search for a different duplicate finder, be sure to choose one that compares photo content and not just file name. I can't tell you how many times I have named and renamed photos and running a duplicate search based on file name has never yielded good results. The coup de gras for all your hard work is to transfer the photos you have scanned into a digital photo frame via Wi-Fi, an SD card, or a thumb drive. Digital frames are everywhere these days with Wi-Fi or USB options, and many even have their own email addresses so that friends and family can mail their photos directly to the photo frame. Since my parents are not tech savvy, I chose the simplest photo frame I could find that requires you just to put your photos on a thumb drive and stick it directly in the back of the frame. The photos can be set to advance at 5, 10, or 15 second increments and can be programmed to turn on or off at desired times. Some of them even have motion detectors and so they don't even come on unless someone walks into the room. At the beginning of this video series, I shared that I didn't worry too much about scanning photos in chronological order. And here's why. You can set the photo frame to randomly display photos. It's actually my favorite way to view the display because it doesn't become too predictable and it always has good variety. I love seeing a picture of my grandparents' wedding followed by my nephew's baby pictures, followed by a current picture of my husband and me on vacation. My parents love it, and it's a fun way to reminisce with them as we watch it together. Once you have tackled the challenge of preserving your family's photos, you can move on to the move itself. Go from this to this without losing a single memory. Having a lifetime of photos rotating through your parents' new photo frame will help create a warm, familiar environment for your parents' new place. Photos that have been stored away for years are now ready to be enjoyed by your parents and other family members for years to come. It becomes increasingly important to your parents, especially if they begin to suffer from memory loss like mine. Photos have a way of connecting memories of old friends or family members that can sustain your loved one during times of loneliness or isolation. Digitizing your parents' photo albums is truly the gift of a lifetime, not only for them, but for you. If you begin to notice that your parent may be experiencing difficulty with memory loss, check out the nine signs your parent may have dementia.